I just want you to tell yourself that I am healed. Okay? I want you to take in a deep breath. Inhale through your nose for a count of three. Hold for a count of one and exhale fully for a count of six. And repeat that process and tell yourself these three words. I am healed. I am free. I am peace. I am healed. I am free. Six. I am peace. Good morning. Good morning, Lindsay. Good morning. Good morning, guys. And so I, I'm just a big believer. I'm not a breath coach or anything like that. I'm just a big believer in breath, guys. I'm a big believer in doing some things that can help you that's in your control. You know, a lot of us, to be real with you, when we go through heartbreak, when we go through hard times, we expect some external thing to, to save us, right? We expect some internal thing, whether it be somebody coming to our life, giving us forgiveness. Like, I'm going to just be real and just say this. Some of y'all are waiting on an apology that you're never going to get from people, ever, because they got too much ego, they got too much pride, whether it's relationship, whether it's a friendship, a partnership, whatever it may be. Some of y'all are standing in the same place waiting for someone to heal your heart. You're like waiting for something to heal your heart. And I just want to challenge you. Give your heart to God, not back to the hands that broke it. Hello. Give your heart to God. Okay, out here I'm connecting with God. Whether you're dealing with a lost loved one, right? Maybe you lost somebody in your life. Trust me, I know how that feels. Y'all know that, but I want to just change your perspective with that. Give it to God and understand that you didn't lose anything you actually gained. Because through death, there's gain. There's everlasting life. And so I just want to challenge you to stop giving your heart back to the situation that broke it. Right? Stop getting your, giving your heart back to the environment that broke it. And some of us, that's what we do because we expect that environment to heal our heart because we're holding on to something that we truly want in our life. And this is what I realized, man. Just because you want it doesn't mean your soul needs it. And some of us, man, when we break our heart, we stay in a place and we blame ourselves. We blame ourselves and we look at ourselves like we're not enough. We allowed a situation that was not meant for our life because some of us, I'm going to be real with you. Some of us, we live our whole life chasing after things that God didn't intend for us to catch. We allow our temptations to put us in a situation. We allowed our vulnerability to put us in a situation. We allowed the voids in our life to put us in a situation. And when your life is being controlled by voids, when your life is being controlled by depression, when your life is being controlled by hurt, by pain, what tends to happen is that you tend to settle for something less than what you deserve because anything that seems like it, anything that's presented like it, anything that may be, you fall for that. And you put yourself in a situation that wasn't meant to heal your heart and all it does is break your heart even more. And you start to feel less about yourself. Can I get an amen in here? If you feel that, send some stars. If you feel that, drop a heart in the comment box. If you feel that, share this with somebody right now because I'm going in for the next 10 minutes. I'm gonna let y'all know right now because I can't afford to have any of you go through this life acting like you're not powerful, acting like your life is over, acting like there ain't no goodness inside you, acting like you ain't got purpose inside you, acting like you ain't got greatness inside you, acting like you ain't got that power inside you. And I know you might be in a place right now where you're saying, Trent, but you don't understand. Trust me, I know. I know how it feels to hear those words, but not, you don't feel it in your soul. But I ask right now that you remove all blockage. I pray right now that you remove all blockage, all doubt that's keeping you from hearing this message that needs to pierce your soul. I pray, I pray that you remove all these things that are keeping you from seeing how great you are. And I pray that you take your life out of situations that's causing you to disqualify yourself. Some of us on this live, we are disqualified ourselves. We've told ourselves that our life is over. We've given ourselves a death sentence. Hello, tweet this, quote this. Just because something is over doesn't mean your life is over. Just because you're going through a season in your life doesn't mean that season has to stay there forever. But some of us, what's happened is we went through a season, we experienced something and something is over. So now we said our life is over. We've given ourselves a death sentence. Every single day we give ourselves a death sentence. We tell ourselves what we can't be, what we can't do, what we're not of. We, we tell ourselves all these things and we live like that. And when you live like that, you're allowing the things that are making you feel powerless to continue to have power over you. How many of you right now drop a heart in the comments that you have experienced a situation that has had so much power over you that is making you powerless? 
You are given permission to things in your life. And I just want to tell you right now, just as well as you have the permission to allow something to continue to hurt your life, you have the same permission to allow things to no longer have power over you. But you have to make that decision today. And stop disqualifying your damn self, man. Oh, Trent, but you don't understand. You don't understand my circle. I don't give a damn about your circumstance. Excuse my French. What I mean by that is your circumstance has nothing to do with your greatness. I don't care what's happened to you in the past. I don't care what mistakes you made. I don't care any of that. I don't care what mess ups you have. That has nothing to do with who you are. If God wanted perfection, God would have made this world perfect. But some of you have disqualified yourself because you allowed other people to make you believe something about yourself that ain't true. You allowed opinions to put yourself in a place where you live in a lie and not your truth and you disqualified yourself. You already told yourself that you're not going to be this, that your life is done. I need you to requalify yourself and stop disqualifying yourself. Instead of finding all the reasons why you can't be it, why you can't do it, why it shouldn't be you, why you're not enough, all the reasons why you can find that, I need you to find that one reason why, why you have so much power in your life. Why? You're going to heal. Why are you going to be the best? Why are you going to take all those pieces, all those broken pieces and turn those broken pieces to a masterpiece in your life? But if we keep allowing ourselves to live broken heart, you say, Trent, how do I heal? You focus on the things you can't control. Get out in nature. Pray to God. Meditate. Stop accepting less. Keep your standards high. Stop lowering your standards. Stop waiting on somebody to give you an apology. Stop waiting on somebody to turn into a person that they don't want to become, that you're hoping they will be. Stop allowing the world to put limitations on your life. Stop allowing the world to put labels on you and start living your damn truth. You ain't meant to live heartbroken. You think God created you to live broken? No, God created you to live beautiful. But what happens is we, we allow those voids, we allow those things in our life to put us in situations, to keep us in situations that make us forget that. And we sit here and we think, okay, this is the life that I deserve. I deserve this life. This is the life that I deserve. And we sit there and we allow ourselves to believe that. We allow that to become our truth. We allow that to become our identity. Your identity is not pain. Your identity is not loss. Your identity is not brokenness. It is not. It's time for you to wipe that identity and get back to the identity of who you truly are. You have a powerful God inside you to so start living a more powerful life. You might say, Trent, I don't have the resources. Trent, I don't have this. I don't have that. Get your mind out of the lack and put your mind on the person, on the resource that you have in your life, the source. Some of you are dependent on resources too much instead of the source. Yeah, you might not have the resources, but guess what? You have the source and you're connected to a greater power. You're connected to something that's more powerful than anything that tried to break you, anything that tried to... Uh, bring pain in your life, you are connected to something more powerful. The problem is we lose that connection and we start being connected to people's opinions that make us feel powerless. We start being connected to waiting on an apology that drains us. We start being connected to all our limitations that make us live a limited life. Listen, man, you got to put that faith back into your heart. You're not called to live a limited life. You're called to live a faithful life, but you got to have faith. You got to have faith. And I'm not talking to you from a place of um, just motivation. I'm talking to you from a place, not just of education, but experience. But experience, because this is the truth. This is the truth. Ain't nobody going to come save you. Some of y'all waiting on somebody to magically pop up in a hot air balloon and come save you. Ain't nobody coming to save you. And when you realize that, you take ownership over your life and you say, you know what? Enough is enough. I'm going to meet the greatest version of myself. Some of us, when I ask him that question, what does the greatest version of yourself look like? We have no idea. We have no idea what we want for our life. We have no idea what we want for our life and we keep on living this limited freaking life. What does the greatest version of yourself look like? Think about that for a second. What's around your life? How are you feeling? What are you doing? How much peace is in your soul? Everybody dealing with grief, whether you lost a person or you lost something, I want to tell you right now. If you change your perspective to realize everything is gain, if you change your perspective to realize everything is working for your life, if you change your perspective and realize, man, you know what? I'm on a journey of healing and I'm going to heal and I'm going to become better because of this. My mom told me this a long time ago. She said, Trent, you might not understand what God is doing in your life, but God has a powerful plan that's beyond your understanding. So you might not understand what he's doing for your life, what he's taking you through, but God is going to bring you to the place where he needs you to be. Trent, you might not understand why you're going through all this, why you're going through all this suffering, but someday it will make sense to you if you choose, if you choose.